We're looking at the unwinding of the biggest bubble across all markets in the history of the world. But right now, one force is extending this bubble and not allowing it to reach the bottom of the bear market. Last year, apps like Coinbase and Robinhood were topping the app store charts. Wall Street bets let the little guys take on the big banks and their numbers went vertical. TikTokers and pro gamers became crypto influencers, used cars and watches became flippers markets, and investing content even started hitting the Netflix homepage. Needless to say, the once esteemed privilege of calling yourself an investor, which was previously reserved for the few rich people in society, had become democratized, and people were making more money sitting at home trading than they typically were in their jobs. That's right, thanks to the pandemic and the bull run, investing went completely mainstream, with normal people taking up investment like never before. But right now, we're looking at a scenario where retail are refusing to sell and allow for the bear market to hit its ultimate lows. So it brings up the question, is retail money or your average investor extending the pain of the bear market? And has the phenomenon of retail investing actually led to a more brutal bear market that will last longer? Now there's no doubt channels like this one have played a role in helping normal people understand the power of investing in crypto, but we're just a brick in the wall of the modern pop culture of investing that has exploded before our eyes. My name's Elio Trades and today we're gonna be taking a deep dive look into this modern phenomenon and figuring out how society has changed since the mass influx of everyday investors into the stock market and the crypto markets. If you're excited, go ahead, destroy that like button. It's the one thing you can do to save the entire global economy. Let's save it together. One, two, three, smash the like button. Congratulations, you did it. I appreciate it. It shows me and the YouTube algorithm you enjoy these videos. As always, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you subscribe and put that bell notification on as as we're gonna be doing our best to help you understand when the pivots in the market come, when we feel caution is called for, or when we feel it's time to start placing bets into some of the best assets in the world. Now with that said, let's dive in. The first modern craze of investing dates back to the 1920s, where average people started investing way more than previously into the stock market. It ended, of course, in ruin with the 1929 stock market crash, which left tons of normies holding the bag for an overinflated stock market bubble. Investing slowed down, and in fact, the stock market was wildly unpopular to invest into for a few decades following. But after World War II, there was so much growth of the economy that investing back into the stock market became a very common American activity once again. But in recent decades, the wild growth of asset valuations, thanks to non-stop fiat money printing, has led to the most exorbitant and generous growth of asset prices in the history of the world economy. And that means that year over year, more and more people start coming into the world of investing. More tools like TradingView and Robinhood and YouTube have been created that allow for more people to understand how to invest, how to do it successfully. And in the process, we have created the modern, retail investor. But throughout 2020 and 2021, the modern retail investor actually went mainstream and investing became pop culture. The terms like buy the dip and hodl became part of the modern lexicon. People understood that as money gets printed, compelling business stocks tend to do well. And thus more and more people started chucking their hard earned money into the stock market. Now, of course, throughout history, the retail investors are always regarded as the little guys. And by the professional investors, they're considered dumb money. And it's typical that the dumb money, like me and probably most of the other people watching this, tend to invest near the top of the bubble. That's of course why we try to make content like this in the bear market, helping people understand that investing at these lows is what the biggest, smartest investors try to do, and that when things have been up only for a decade plus, well, that's usually not the best time to buy. But more on that at the end of the episode. 2020 saw TikTokers and Gen Z explode with interest in things like Wall Street bets and cryptocurrency, which led to an entirely new generation understanding how to make money and deploy it into assets that can make you more money over time. The biggest retail investment bubble was born. There's only one problem. That bubble has yet to deflate. You see, since 1971, when we left the gold standard, the actual value of fiat currency has gone down the gutter. 
And in response, of course, the values of housing, equities, and other things that are traded against the dollar has gone pretty much vertical. But something massive happened in 2008, the Great Financial Crisis. During the Great Financial Crisis, we saw the biggest threat to our financial system that we'd seen in decades, with one of the biggest investment banks, Lehman Brothers, actually collapsing, and countless foreclosures across the nation on housing that had been financed with subprime mortgages. We're not going to rehash all that. The point is the government's response to fix the economy was to lower interest rates to zero and to pump out as much free money into the economy as they could to get things going again. The result was the longest and strongest bull run in the history of the American stock market, and we got the birth of cryptocurrencies. Hearing about someone make a million dollars off of their $10 invested into Shiba Inu or their $50 into Dogecoin, again, I'm being a little dramatic here, but the point is these stories of early Bitcoin, early Ethereum, early Tesla, and other extremely high-performing assets has attracted so many to want to try their luck in the crypto and modern stock markets. We know what drives the excitement around these parts, and that is FOMO. But of course, FOMO can be an extremely toxic drug when applied during a bear market. I've personally shared a ton of stories of how FOMO has been the biggest thing that screwed me over in 2018, and I wish I had just had patience. Of course, who can forget the Dogecoin millionaire, who is of course no longer a millionaire, but still apparently buying the dip. And of course, we shall not forget the Reddit survey in which 70% of respondents believed they had the right tools to become crypto billionaires. That's right, billionaire with a B. Despite these very realistic goals, one cannot refute the fact that there is a new generation that understands that by taking risk and placing risk into assets, new tech-based volatile assets, that they would have a chance to create wealth that they probably would never amass through their everyday jobs. That's right, we have a new generation who understand the value of taking risk risk and asymmetric upside. Now, while that is amazing and it's truly the way to build wealth, it also comes with extreme risk once the economy does turn down away from the bubble. As you can see, from the beginning of the decade of the 2010s, investing as a search term on Google continued to get more popular until February of 2021, where it peaked and started to trend down, more or less along with major NASDAQ tech stocks. Robinhood quickly became the number one trending app on the Apple Store, and the previously tiny amount of Wall Street Bets users on Reddit went went absolutely vertical as soon as the meme stock era erupted. And of course, when something is so good, the journey is just so sweet, few can recognize when it's actually over or on a significant pause. So of course, this tweet by Ninja saying, let me guess, bear market over, parabolic trend soon, retail traders quitting jobs again, all while the whole economy is slowly collapsing before our eyes. Yes, this expresses how unwilling most retail traders are to give it up now that they've rearranged their lives around this incredible new world of investing, which will undoubtedly make more people more wealthy over time. The reality is that learning when to place your bets and timing those bets is something that most new investors simply don't have the experience to do. I'm still learning myself, and I try to share my learnings with you in real time. So what does this mean, and where does this leave us going forward? We're coming out of a period of retail mania, and now we've entered into a macroeconomic downturn that seems to be on a size and scale incomparable to any time before. Every Every market from luxury watches to real estate to stocks, cryptos, and of course, even cash are going down in tandem. That's of course because inflation is the highest it's ever been. There's literally nowhere to stick your money to make money unless you're betting on temporary moves and commodities. The reality for a new generation addicted to investing has become quite grim very quickly. In fact, there's a strong correlation to the Roaring Twenties, which saw an explosion of wealth and opulence throughout America, only to be followed by the most brutal economic downturn in the history of the country. Similar levels of speculation were also had during the dot-com bubble, where companies with absolutely no business model whatsoever were worth tens of billions of dollars before the complete collapse of the stock market, which left many who were gambling on internet stocks up a creek without a paddle. However, the moment we're in isn't perfectly like 2000 or 2008 or even 1929. In fact, this bear market is starting to look quite different, though you can use those as general guides. What's really happening right now is historic levels of retail still holding on to their investments. And this is, of course, due to the hangover from an unprecedented level of engagement and involvement from retail. Well, while all the smart money has exited their positions at the top of the market, the people who are still holding stocks and crypto are surprisingly the retail investor. 
Now, in crypto, that's not surprising, but in the stock market, it actually is quite surprising. Just a few weeks ago, we saw that the stock market crash brought in $2 billion in dip buying from retail investors. Friend of the channel, Darius Dale, who will be back very soon for a follow-up interview, tweeted on October 4th that retail is still in buy the effing dip mode, not in sell the effing rally mode, despite people like Darius, Wifey, myself, and others trying desperately to spread the news that it is not the time to be buying or hodling these risk assets, but it's instead the time to be protecting your wealth, protecting your capital, waiting for the lows to come so that buying can once again resume and we can ride the next generational trend. More on that at the end of the video. In fact, as you can see from this chart from Sven Henrik, actually retail is holding a historic amount of long exposure in the stock market, whereas you can see in 2008, it crashed down below 40% exposure. We're currently sitting at 66% exposure, which is way more than historical averages. And as you can see, there's this huge amount of more long exposure that came in since 2021. We just simply haven't seen the outflows from equities yet that are historically associated with market crashes, market resets, and bottoms. Each piece of data and every chart continues to drive this point home. To be clear, this has nothing to do with the bearish sentiment. Everyone's bearish, but they're just not selling. So while you could be bearish sentiment-wise, the actual flow of funds does not indicate the typical activity that we'd like to see with the stock market bottom. As you can see here, we just haven't seen these types of negative flows that are normally associated with the bottoming and reversal of the market. And that's because the FOMO drug is still with us as people are feeling bearish, but acting bullish. And as a final staggering piece of data to illustrate this point, retail money magnet, ARK Invest, drew in $197 million of inflows just at the end of September, the most for a single day since July. This, of course, shows even more extreme dip buying by retail buyers. And how do we know they're retail? Well, meanwhile, Elon Musk and the entire insider staff of Tesla are dumping, 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 while the long-term believers and the retail buyers are aggressively piling in. And as this chart shows, pretty clearly we need this blue line to come down pretty dramatically before we can see a bottom that actually compares to 2008, the 1980s, the 1930s, or any real major cyclical reset. So we're still hoping for a very baby weight pullback if this blue line remains elevated near historic high levels of return. So with all this information, can we conclude now that retail money is extending the pain? Because most macro experts agree that we need more pain, we need to stamp out demand, we need to control this overheated economy, we need people spending less, aping less into the stock market, and we need the jobs market to weaken. The whole point here is that this hasn't happened, and one of the biggest components that's left is the stock market is incredibly resilient. That's right, retail buyers are aping in like crazy, buying the dip, unable to let go of the FOMO train. Now, the reality is that we're probably not going to exactly repeat 2008 or the inflation from the 70s and 80s or the 1920s. No, we're in an entirely new economic scenario, and the actual pain might come to a close earlier than it did in those particular episodes. But one thing is certain, the market has not fully reset. The actual FOMO in both the stock market and crypto is still alive and well. And until it settles down just a little bit more, it feels as though retail money is extended ending the pain of the bear market, and that the aggressive buying in at the lows is actually taking the amount of time for this market cycle to play out and stretching it on out into the future. Now, does this mean that crypto and stocks are due for a lot more pain? I don't know. I'm approaching it with a ton of caution. I'm certainly not the one adding to the ARK Invest inflows, not yet, but I'll be there waiting for a pivot in the market, ready to start allocating, because I believe at the other end of this painful bear market will open up the biggest and most appetizing investment opportunities in a generation. But first, we need to see some serious retail capitulation. Not necessarily in crypto, as crypto is mostly a retail-driven phenomenon. But if you're asking me, it's not even a conspiracy theory at this point. We know that the big corporations, the big professional investors, don't want retailers being the ones that get the best buys. Nope, they'll want to break those little guys, wait for the market to reset, and once again, be the ones buying at the lows. I believe retail capitulation is still a missing ingredient here for this bear market cycle to truly reset watching for that retail capitulation and actually being ready to start buying as the rest of retailers start truly capitulating is part of the magic sauce of actually skating to where the puck is going to be, predicting a few moves ahead of the market, swimming upstream and benefiting disproportionately from these incredible and generous stock and crypto markets that we have in our modern society.
That's right, I'll be there to buy the lows as most people are capitulating the best opportunities of their lifetime. If you're excited for that and you wanna be on this journey with me, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this as we help you understand the forces that are propelling the markets in each direction and follow the journey as we all build wealth together. As always, you can get $15 off your first $150 trade on FTX if you sign up with the link below. It's free money, why not? And it supports the channel. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Elio Trades and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.